Today, I'm going to show you how I made this Iron Man missile launcher that actually works. Hey, what's up? Sean here, and this is my Iron Man Mark III arm. It's got a syringe attached to it, which allows you to control the movement, and it's got articulating fingers. So, uh, what do you think? Pretty cool, right? I made this Iron Man missile launcher mostly out of cardboard, foam, and popsicle sticks. And as usual, I'll walk you through the entire process and show you how I made this whole thing from scratch by hand. Before we get into that though, I just wanna mention real quick that if you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? There's tons of cool crafts on this channel that I know you'll love, so you definitely don't wanna miss out on those. So make sure you turn on alerts for my channel and that way you'll be notified every time I post a new video. So to get started, I found a free Iron Man hand template online, which I'll leave a link to down below, of course. And you'll need to open this template with Adobe Reader so that it actually prints in the correct scale. So you want to make sure you select the poster format, then set the overlap to zero. Uh, for my personal hand size, I set the tile scale to 85%. Specify what type of paper you're using, and then it's ready to print. If your hand doesn't match with the picture, then you can just scale it up or down accordingly. So for me, I had to scale it down to 85%, but uh, everyone's hand is different of course so that's why there's a picture there to help you figure it out once the templates were printed i used some spray adhesive to glue together some poster board and craft foam now my craft foam already has an adhesive backing on it but in my experience sometimes it likes to peel up so i was hoping the spray adhesive would help make a more permanent stick using a ballpoint pen i transferred all those template pieces onto the craft foam and poster board and cut them out using a sharp craft knife before we go any further, a quick word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Hold on, hold on. Before you skip, you might want to stick around because I have some pretty interesting news for you. Everybody, say hello to Ninja. That's right, Ninja is partnering with Raid Shadow Legends to bring you one of the sickest champions this game has ever seen. This champion is one of a kind. He's got a bow and arrow and a katana and he can wield both ice and fire. But he doesn't just look good, he's an absolute beast in battle too. He hits super hard and he's awesome against pretty much any boss in the game. In fact, he has special abilities that come into play only when he's fighting bosses. And his amazing passive means he gets even stronger as the battle goes on. On top of that, he's got an AOE freeze on his third skill which is one of the strongest crowd control effects in the entire game. Ninja is available right now for free but this limited edition champion is only available until October 15th. If that's not enough, Raid has just released five other brand new champions and they've got a bunch of summer events and activities happening right now. So hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and if you're a new player you'll get 200,000 silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, one ancient shard, and an epic hero Chinoru. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here for the next 30 days only. Alright so here I have have the piece labeled as thumb one and there's quite a few pieces in this template but uh, not to worry I will break it all down for you starting with the finger joints so to glue this piece shut I'm gonna use contact cement which if you don't know is the best kind of glue for foam this is kind of optional but if you have a heat gun you can heat up the foam a little bit and that will make the foam less porous which makes the surface more suitable for paint here I have the piece labeled as thumb two which has a bit more of a complex shape but the process is similar I start by bending it so it can start to take shape and then I can apply contact cement to the edges just like we did on thumb one. Give the contact cement a moment to dry and become tacky and then I can press all the edges together to form a fingertip. Again you can heat seal this foam but uh, make sure not to stay in one spot too long because it's really easy to burn the foam by accident. So now that you've seen the process of how to put together thumb 1 and thumb 2, the process is the exact same on all the other finger joints, so you should know what to do from here. Now I'm going to use a product called Quick Seal, which is an adhesive caulk, and I can use that to sort of hide the seams of the foam. Now this doesn't get rid of the seams completely, but it definitely makes a difference and uh, makes the seams a lot less visible, which is nice. Quick Seal shrinks a little bit when it dries, so I went over everything twice and this was the result. After that, I used some 400 grit sandpaper to get rid of the brush strokes and uh, unwanted texture, but to keep in mind, this product is not meant to be sanded, so you want to make sure you do most of the smoothing uh, prior to it drying. 
For paint, I primed the foam with a few coats of black Plasti Dip followed by gold Tamiya spray paint and then red metallic Tamiya spray paint after that. Since the red metallic paint is kind of translucent, it won't show up very well if you try to spray it directly over the black Plasti Dip. So that's why we do a coat of gold first, which will make the red pop. Once the paint dried, I went over everything with two layers of Pledge Floor Gloss, which you can apply on with a brush, but I just used a cheap airbrush to speed things up. From here, I'm now going to string together all the finger joints using some black fabric elastic which I used super glue to attach on. Now that we have all the finger joints completed, we can now make the palms. So right here are the rest of the pieces left from the template which I will again use contact cement for. By the way, just so you know, there's a small mistake on the template that I found. Uh, basically, there's two pieces that are labeled as middle one, but uh, one out of the two should be labeled as middle three. So just thought that was worth mentioning in case that causes confusion or anything like that. Also, in case you didn't already know, the creator of this template has a YouTube channel known as Dali Lomo DIY. And on his channel, he actually has a two-part video series of a time-lapse of him assembling the entire hand from start to finish. So if you feel like you need more information about how to put together this template, uh, just check the description box below. I'll leave links to those videos and you can check them out if you need to. In some instances, contact cement isn't really as necessary, particularly for those larger surface areas there. So occasionally I switched to super glue when it was more convenient, but uh, contact cement would have worked just as well. Well, hey, if you're still here watching this video and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and uh, turn on the notifications for my channel because I've got tons more DIY videos just like this one that are yet to come. So you definitely don't want to miss out on those. Once again, I used a heat gun to heat seal the foam and then after that, I filled in all the gaps with some more quick seal. After the quick seal dried, I painted these pieces the same way I painted the fingertips. Looking back, it would have been a better idea to glue these two pieces together first before painting them, but uh, it was pretty late at night when I was doing this, so I'm not really sure what was going through my head to be honest. Once the palm dried, I attached the fingers to the knuckle piece using those elastic bands. And before I could glue these two pieces together, I just scraped off the finish a little bit so that way the paint would have something to grip onto. For the repulsor, I used a piece of white poster board and uh, once again I had to scrape off some of the paint before I glued it on. Now there's actually two more pieces on the template that are supposed to be glued onto the bottom of the hand right there, but uh, I just ignored those because it would have blocked my hand from being able to slide in and out. Now the hand is complete and there are no more templates moving forward. So instead of making more templates myself, I took the easy way out and found this empty shampoo bottle that had a nice curve to it. So I heat sealed the foam before gluing it over top of the plastic. And uh, after that, I can run a sharp blade along the edge to trim off the excess and uh, make the two edges flush with each other, like this. Alright, so I want to make that dome piece that we just made detachable. So what better way to do that than to use good old neodymium magnets. So all I did here was just put those two 8x3mm neodymium magnets in between two layers of duct tape and that did the trick. Now I'm going to move on and start working on the shooting mechanism. So to start, I just simply drilled a few holes in this popsicle stick which will come into play in just a second here. Also, I super glued those holes to make sure they don't crack. After that, I used a paper clip to hinge these two pieces together, cut the excess off with a wire cutter, and I forgot to show it, but I did use some pliers to shape the paper clip before gluing one end of the paper clip to the popsicle stick. These two little popsicle sticks were also attached using paper clips, and those will come into play later. I also had these larger jumbo popsicle sticks, which came in handy for making this little platform here, but uh, if you wanted, you could just use regular sized popsicle sticks for this. 
Notice there's a little hole in the popsicle stick right there. Basically, we can just feed a paper clip through there and uh, those popsicle sticks that are on the edge of the platform will basically guide all the moving parts like this. Right here I have some 5 milliliter syringes and I'm going to use these syringes to basically control the movement of the missile launcher to open and close it. So I just trimmed it down certain areas of the syringe, drilled a couple holes here and there and after that I can attach on the plunger using a paper clip and feed it through those holes that we drilled in the popsicle sticks earlier on. Now I made more of the scissor looking pieces, except these ones are a little bit smaller than the first ones I made. And once again, use more paper clips to hook these on like so. So this right here is a bike brake cable and housing. So this is what's going to allow us to transfer the movement from one syringe to the other syringe. And uh, if you watched my last video, you'll know that I used this method on my Miles Morales mask. And uh, that worked so well that I wanted to do it again here. Right here, I'm using hot glue and poster board to connect the bike brake housing to the syringe. But uh, later on, I ended up getting rid of that and just wrapping duct tape around there, which I'm not sure why I didn't do in the first place. Then I hot glue the paper clip to the plunger. And now you can kind of see the mechanism start forming here, although we're not quite done yet. If you don't have a pen cartridge tube like I do for this, you could just use a straw or roll up a paper tube or something. But the purpose of this tube is so that we can feed this 1 8 inch dowel through there. And once you do this on both sides, it should look a little something like this. In order to make the dart fly out, I'm going to use a metal spring for that. This is a 0 0.8 by 8 by 50 millimeter spring. And the barrel, which as you can see is just a paper tube, needs to be slightly larger than the outer diameter of the spring so that the spring can slide freely. This little binder board ring got glued onto the back of the barrel and I made the length of the barrel the same as the spring when it's fully compressed. Next thing I'm going to do is make the little dart thing that's going to shoot out and uh, as opposed to the spring, this should actually be able to slide through the little brown ring. So you want to make this stick just small enough so it can slide through the ring freely like this. At this point, I went ahead and cut out a little notch in the stick there, which we will need for later. And just for fun, I glued the cap of a super glue bottle to the tip of the bullet. And then after that, I glued the spring to the dart like this. This paper tube right here should have the same inner diameter as the hole on the brown ring. While that was drying, I made this little popsicle stick piece right here and that will basically lock and release the dart. So the way this works is basically the notch on the dart gets caught on the popsicle stick and then to fire you just need to lower down the popsicle stick and that will release the dart. Once I was happy with that little shooting contraption, I glued it to the wooden dowels using some more popsicle sticks. After that, I attached a string to that popsicle stick lever there and I'm going to feed the two ends of the string through those two holes that I just drilled at the bottom. And when you pull on the string, you should be able to lower the popsicle stick down like that, which is exactly what we want. As you can see, I just tied the string down to the bottom and now you can see that when the barrel raises, it will hit a certain point where the string will automatically tug down on the popsicle stick lever. I attached a syringe to the other end of the bike brake the same way I did with the first syringe except this time I added a spring from a spiral notebook so that it would automatically spring back. Uh, later though I actually ended up getting rid of the spring because it made it kind of difficult to reload but uh, other than that the spring actually worked quite well it just made it harder to reload which was kind of annoying so that's why I got rid of it. Now you can see here I'm working on the forearm piece and for that I thought it would be convenient just to use this old recycled plastic cup and I basically just covered the plastic in foam which I contact cemented on. And I did the exact same thing with these milk jugs here. I just cut out the shape I wanted, covered it in craft foam and uh, this one actually had a seam on it because it was hard to get the whole shape with one strip of foam so I had to cover it with quick seal. And there's one final piece I made using craft foam and binder board, which is this piece right here. 
To make it a little bit more comfortable to wear, I glued on some EVA floor mat foam on the inside of the forearm and I attached the two forearm pieces using six straps of fabric elastic. Then I made this piece detachable. This is just going to make it easier to reload and it just clips on and off with some 5 by one millimeter magnets. Right here, I glued on some popsicle sticks so that I could attach the milk jugs. And of course, I did this on both sides before gluing this whole entire thing to the forearm. And to top it all off, I am going to do some simple weathering using some black and silver acrylic paint. And I don't want to go too heavy here. I don't want to ruin all of my hard work. I just want to kind of lightly scuff it up and make it look used and believable. Finally, one last coat of Pledge Floor Gloss to seal the black and silver acrylic paint. Well, here we are. So first we can slide on the forearm piece. After that, I can put on the glove, which is a little bit of a tight squeeze. So if you have a bigger, wider hand, you might need to make a latch or like an opening to slide your hand in. But uh, luckily I have pretty skinny fingers. Once the hand is on, I can clip this piece on with the magnet. And there we go. So to load in the dart, just insert the dart into the barrel like that and then pull up. And when you pull up, that will unlock the barrel. And while it's unlocked, you can push the dart all the way in. And once it's all the way in, you just push this whole thing down and voila. Now you can put the piece back on there like that. Three, two, one, fire. Now you might recall earlier I said that I got rid of the spring on the syringe and uh, that's because it makes it easier to reload. You really only have one hand to reload because this hand uh, doesn't really articulate enough to where you could press down on the syringe. You can see I can you know, bend my, my fingers and everything and I, I can even bend my wrist, but my palm is kind of stuck. So, you know, I can't even really make a fist. I mean, that's, that's as good as it gets right there. I'm really satisfied with how this turned out. Although looking back, there's, you know, a few things here and there I could have done better, but you know, I'm still learning, still progressing and trying to get better at making these props just like everyone else. And you know, that's what crafting is all about. So don't take it too seriously and just have fun. So what do you want to see me make next? Go ahead, leave it in the comments below and I will make an effort to heart every comment that makes a video suggestion provided that I actually see it. But uh, yeah. Go ahead, comment down below right now. I'm waiting. Oh, oh, you did it? Okay, all right. If you haven't already, then check out my previous video, which was a Miles Morales mask with moving lenses. Definitely one you don't wanna miss. Thank you very much to my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. And thank you for watching this video.